His case was referred to Dr. Shaw, consultant psychiatrist to the Bexley Group of Hospitals. The case of Mr. Bulmer is fairly typical of the presentation of the alcoholic to the casualty department. It's often forgotten that accidents, illnesses and operations may give rise to confusional episodes in alcoholics and that these confusional episodes, or delirium tremens, can be life-threatening and require immediate appropriate treatment. In the malnourished alcoholic, there is the additional hazard that such a delirious episode may progress to Wernicke's encephalopathy. Should this occur, the patient passes, firstly, from the restless, excitable, delirious stage over a period of a day or so into a lethargic, somnolent, semi-stuporose phase with a variable degree of mental confusion. Secondly, cerebellar ataxia develops involving mainly the trunk and lower limbs. The degree of ataxia may be such that the patient is unable to stand unaided. Well, you can see the careful wide-based walk, the trunkal incoordination there, very marked. You can see the careful attempts to turn, very difficult. Can he just walk back now? Let me stand up for a second and get rid, rid of some of this nervousness in the Okay. Knees. All right. And again, you can see the marked in coordination. Thirdly, ophthalmoplegias develop of varying degrees of severity, the most common finding being bilateral rectus palsy. The outcome of the acute condition is grave. Some 10% of patients will die, and almost 80% will progress to the chronic condition, the Korsakoff psychosis. We have a patient who demonstrates some of the features of this chronic condition. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Dr. Shaw is my name. Please meet you, Dr. Shaw. I'd like you, first of all, to remember a date for me, if you will. This is the 10th of July, 1979. Now, I just want to ask you a few questions. What has your memory been like? Poor, very poor. Been very poor, and you've been aware of that. But I know that you're quite good at arithmetic, aren't you? Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. First of all, can you take 85 from 123? 38. Very good. How many thripney bits are there in three and nine pins? Um, 50. Very good. Do you know the name of this hospital? No, I don't know. Well, it begins with a B. Bexley. Bexley, that's very good, yes. What was that date I asked you to remember? I can't remember, sir. Did I ask you to remember a date? That's what I mean, I can't remember. You can't even remember if I asked you to remember it? No, yes. I see. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How long do you think you've been here now? I've no idea at all. You've no idea? This seems like the first day, I don't know. I see. Uh -huh. Yes. We've been here now for f five months. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No way, no way. I see. No. Where have you come from then? Where did you come from to this hospital? I don't I think of my home address. And where is that? In Port Glasgow. I see. But you haven't lived in Port Glasgow for the past ten years. Oh, yes. Have you? Yes. Well, he clearly shows the major symptom of the Korsakoff psychosis, that is, the memory disturbance. It's clear that he's unable to form new memories, Although, interestingly enough, if the memory is jogged, the information may then be recalled. You'll remember, for example, that we gave him the initial of the hospital's name, and he was then able to recall the name of the hospital. He shows also the, the retrospective memory gap, in his case, extending backwards over many years. He last remembers being in Port Glasgow as a man of 41. He is, in fact, a man of 48 years of age, and he has not been in the Port Glasgow area for many years. 
Despite this, his intellectual grasp is well retained, and he's able to do quite complicated sums in his head. Well, here we have a man, 48 years of age, with many years ahead of him, but in his case, uh, he is permanently disabled. Now, I know as well as you do how difficult it can be to stop someone from drinking. But I believe that we can often prevent the more disastrous consequences of excessive drinking simply by the use of a high potency intravenous vitamin preparation as soon as the warning signs become apparent. I'll ask my colleague, Dr. Alan Thompson, to enlarge on the mechanisms involved. This is the brain of a man who died 